Divine mercy is God's love reaching down to help his creatures. In the Old Testament, there are two Hebrew words that we usually translate as mercy. First, there is the word hesed, which means steadfast love, covenant love. Someone who has the attribute of hesed is someone you can always count on, someone who never lets you down. The second word for God's mercy in the Old Testament is the Hebrew word rahamim, tender, compassionate love, a love that springs from pity. In the New Testament, the Greek word that is usually translated as mercy is the word elios. It can also be translated as loving kindness or tender compassion. The Greek word comes from a root word meaning oil that is poured out. Thus, when the church sings in her liturgy the Greek words Kyrie Eleison and Christi Eleison, she is praying that the merciful love of God will be poured out upon her children. According to the ancient fathers of the church, the church herself was born from the wounded side of Christ, when out of his heart there poured out blood and water, symbolic of all the graces of the two chief sacraments, baptism and the Eucharist. In short, Elios is God's love poured out upon his people. In the Latin tradition, the principal word for mercy is misericordia, which means, literally miserable heart. In Pope John Paul II's encyclical letter dives in misericordia, rich in mercy, from 1981, he wrote, mercy is love's second name. Secondly, he taught that mercy is the greatest attribute of God. Love in general might be defined as a sharing and giving of oneself to another, a selfless seeking of the good of another. Traditional Catholic moral theology treats of the virtue of mercy as flowing from love of neighbor. Namely, it is that virtue which inclines us to offer assistance to a person suffering from want or misery. Divine Mercy Sunday is a feast celebrated the Sunday after Easter. It comes from the visions of a Polish nun, Sister Maria Faustina Kowalska, that began on February 21, 1931. In 2000, Saint Pope John Paul II canonized Saint Faustina and, during the ceremony, he declared, It is important then that we accept the whole message that comes to us from the Word of God on this second Sunday of Easter, which from now on throughout the Church will be called Divine Mercy Sunday. She saw a vision of Jesus standing and was told to have the image made with the prayer, Jesus I trust in you. The visions, that speak of Jesus' great mercy for sinners, if they come to him, lasted from 1931 to 1938. Pope John Paul II established that this Sunday have a plenary indulgence. Indulgences mean lessening of temporal punishments for sins. The four requirements for gaining the indulgence. A plenary indulgence, granted under the usual three conditions, confession, Eucharistic communion and prayer for the intentions of the Pope, to the faithful who, on the second Sunday of Easter or Divine Mercy Sunday, in any church or chapel, in a spirit that is completely detached from sin, take part in the prayers and devotions held in honor of Divine Mercy, or who, in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament exposed or reserved in the tabernacle, recite the Our Father in the Creed, adding a devout prayer to the merciful Lord Jesus, for example, Jesus, I trust in you. The promise of Jesus to Saint Faustina was, I want to grant a complete pardon to the souls that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion. On the Feast of My Mercy, Whoever approaches the fountain of life on this day will be granted complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. Saint Faustina also introduced the Divine Mercy Chaplet, a prayer, which is often said daily at 3 p.m. when Jesus died. Our Lord called this the Hour of Mercy. Please subscribe to Catholic News World's YouTube channel. Thanks and God bless.